Hi there, everybody. Welcome so, back. Oh, time to visit the Ascalon Club. I interrupted myself. I was going to say welcome back to Vampire. And as Dr. Reed just alluded, we do need to go see the Ascalon Club. But we've got some real serious situations going on in Whitechapel. We don't want that region to go critical in terms of health. So we need to go administer some treatments, I think, until uh, to prevent the kind of situation that happened at the docks where everybody turns into hostile critters. Oh man, we've got a priest here. All right, am I even going the right way? Yeah, okay, I am. Actually, I could go back and I think we're going to do that. I'm going to head this direction. I don't think that's... There's probably still going to be baddies there, but... If I can get this direction... Ooh! Did they see me? Or are they looking at... There's some... I mean, there's Ekon, rogue Ekons now, roaming around. There's all kinds of stuff happening. Oh! What was that? Oh, I also forgot... Large beast, just random large beast. Level 26. Oh my gosh. Ill informed dazzled skull. <laughs> Ill informed. I like. What? Oh! Whoa. Oh! Check that out. Uh recognize you. No. This one ain't on our list. Well that's one less anyway. It'll make me kind of happy. That was the vampire I saw earlier. This war takes no prisoners. Wow. Things are getting rough out here. could go down there and fight those guys, but as we learned from a couple of episodes ago when I did that little experiment, you don't get a whole lot of XP for combat, so it really is better to avoid it if possible. Oh, I heard something. Well, maybe not. Okay, so if I make a right here, then I can get up into Whitechapel, which is here. Alright, so we'll go through this gate. Hopefully we have access. Okay, good. I know uh, Lady Ashbury gave us her key so that we've got access to all of the portals into the West End, which is what I just left. This is Whitechapel here. Did I see this gentleman glow? Yep. A ring and a cigarette case. Okay, so we need to find as many citizens as we can and try to administer treatments to them, because we do not want them... Here we go. Oh, well, Neuralgia. That one we don't know how to solve, so he's gonna have to continue suffering, unfortunately. She is healthy. Which is good. Oh, Petrescu, he's alive. After his place was... Oh, he's been here. We've seen him before. Yeah, he's, he's very upset with us. Reasonably so. Oh! Xiaoshun. Okay, we need to talk to you. Good evening, Xiaoshun. Wang Shanghao, Dr. Reed. It's good to see you again. And give her... Well, let's ask her about Whitechapel How first. is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel? Not good, days? Doctor. My we know this. My only relief is that my Matthew died before seeing the madness that approaches. <sighs> I'm afraid we won't survive this trial, Dr. Reed. Oh. I thought she was going to talk longer. <laughs> Bad time to take a, take a sip feel? of water there. Physically speaking, I mean. I don't feel good, Dr. Reed. Not at all. All right, let's give her a cold treatment. You should recover quickly after taking this. Thank you, Doctor. All right, now let's... Goodbye for now. We don't have any more side quests to deal with, except for that one... Where we have to find somebody who reads Braille. That's the only outstanding side quest we have. Uh, 
Uh, I had a viewer remind me recently that you can't... Oh. Unknown. Who's this? He's in there? Yeah. Hey. 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 Let me in. Where is he going? Just gonna hang out at the window, just admiring your your low rent view. Have I unlocked this hideout? Yeah, I have. Okay, don't need to go there. And we'll go around and see if we can. Oh, oh, it's Joe. He's healthy. Barrett's healthy. There we go. We need to get up there though. Can I get in this door, perhaps? Hello, young man. Oh. I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter? You got down there Sorry. fast. No, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. We're just going to force our way in, use our vampire ability. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me then. Okay then. Come on in. I'm Harry, by the way. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. Do we know this guy? Harry Peterson. Oh, what? Is this Joe's son? Or <laughs> the other guy's son? Sepsis. Do we have a sepsis treatment? So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? He's either depressed or very slow. He just seems to not <laughs> really be all with it. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Forgive my bluntness, young man, but you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? Mm, let's see. Place to call home. Situation can only improve. Father did his best. You have a roof over your head, a place to call home. Many people here are not as lucky, you know. That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Oh, wow. I don't know how to help you with that one, buddy. Have you any recent news of Nurse Crane and her dispensary? Nobody dares to enter the dispensary now. Rumors say the nurse has gone mad. Well, we took care of Nurse Crane, unfortunately. Do you remember when Barrett Lewis was close to your family? To your mother? Not really. I was too young. But I remember it was a happier time. Mr. Lewis was funny. He often had dinner with us. Why are you sad, then? Because it hurts to remember a time when my father used to laugh and smile. It hurts to realize he's as sad as me now. How was he towards you? He was nice, I guess. He never forgot my birthday. He always offered me books. I liked books. Me too, Harry. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. 
Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. Hmm. Guilt. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Sounds like a boxer. Uh, okay, so that's everything we can chat with him about. Let's do the medical check. Do you need any medical help, young man? Given yes, that I do. sepsis treatment we have. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. <laughs> Medication alone won't cure melancholia. Get I'm not it. sure I'm happy with the idea of a living grip. long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. At this time in history, there so really was glue. no interest in, uh, no understanding in, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna steal your stuff, by the way, kid. Uh, mental health was really not understood quite so much as a concept as it is now. It was just things like depression were just... The assumption that somebody was just not trying hard enough to be happy. Alright, do I need shillings? Am I just gonna really just rob Joe? Oh, job refusal letter. Dear Mr. Peterson, it is my duty to inform you of our refusal to accept your application for a job at the dockyard. I must thank you for the time spent at our office explaining the difficulty of your situation, but with your ill boy and the loss of your beloved wife. I inserted the word but in there for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't know why I, I did that. I swear I saw the word. Oh boy. All right. But here it is. It's in the dick. Wow, did my eyes jump that far ahead and just insert the word? <laughs> oh man, okay, but it is my duty to point out the policy of our company, which expressly reproves the employment of former criminals or convicts. Ouch. Your unfortunate connections with the ill famed wet boot boys have been duly noted. These are hard times, sir, and Fincher and Harper. Finch and Harper, I'm doing it. Ah, intend to reward the first. Reward first the candidates who pass the small inquiry. Oh, we like to conduct about our future employees. You have my deepest sympathy, and may God be with you and your family. Sincerely, R.D. Harper. Well, that's why he went back to criming. Oh, professional vampire hunters. New collectible. If you ever suspect someone to be a vampire, don't try to kill it yourself. You have no chance. Instead, contact me or try to inform a professional vampire killer like our friend Ichabog Throgmorton. These men and women are rare, but they have but they know what to do against these evil creatures. It seems that some of them are working together under the name of the Guard of Prewin, a paramilitary organization dedicated to the eradication of vampires in London. They are your friends. You are not alone. Solutions exist. Be smart. Spread the word. Clarence Crossley. Oh, Clarence. You and Ichabog Throgmorton are really causing a lot of problems. Alright, down we go. Out we go. Uh, can I... Why can't I go out that door? Okay. So... Who else in this area needs some treatment? So we took care of her. We met him. He is now being treated. Can't do anything for him. Okay. Cadigan. Now Cadigan's got a cold. Jeez. He was fine the last time I saw him. Clayton Darby. All right. Well, fortunately, I've got treatments for the all three of these people. So I just need to... Just need to hunt them down. Where was the chapel? Okay, so I need to do an about face. And 
up here. And I think in here, isn't it? Am I in the wrong spot? There's Clayton. Okay, good. No, don't go behind a thing that I can't get into. No! <laughs> I cannot oh. enter. Come back. I've got treatment for you. Where is he going? What is back there? Nothing. Yo. Clayton, I promise I've got good stuff for you. It's locked. Oh, son of a gun. All right. Uh, Nither Cot, I think, hangs out. Okay, here's the flower girls, flowers, up here is where the poet is, there he is, and there's the flower lady, but she's healthy. You. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? No, but I can be Do of help Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. All right. I'll leave you alone, sir. Let's head back to... Let's do one little... One little peek over here. Who's that? Oh, that is a... That is a werewolf. Oh, God. Wait a minute. In Whitechapel? <gasps> oh, no. Wait, they're not at critical condition yet. There shouldn't be... Oh, no. Is it somebody we know? Why can't I... Oh, gosh. Okay, well, let's, let's run back to where Clayton was. See if he's come out of that hidey hole. Oh, there's somebody. No, that's not him. You coming back? I've got treats for you. Okay, good. Glad you didn't hang out there too long. Come here. Talk to me. There we go. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, <laughs> you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. All right, there is one more person, I believe. Whoops. Oh, him. <sighs> Well, I can't have him turning into a werewolf or something, so I guess... I guess I'll give him a treatment. <laughs> if I can find him. I don't remember... All these streets end up looking very similar. Here's the Lady of the Night. I remember him being somewhat around... This is not where I want to be, but I guess we will deal with this situation. Ooh. Oh. oh! Wow, that's new. Okay. Nothing in there I need. It's another skull, but Feh. Can I get through here now? Now that we know that we can bust stuff up. Oh no! Hey dude. What's uh blood spear? Oh! Oh I can't. 
Tops! Oh no, that's not what I want. I want... Oh, rats, I just wasted a bunch of ammo. Uh, Giselle's dagger, here we go. Oh, oh hey. Stamina, that's why I couldn't do anything. Everything seems so sluggish. Okay. That was exciting. All that for a box of pills. Okay, neither of these guys are strong against the shadow magic, so we'll start with that. Oh! Ooh, wow, that was <laughs> lucky. Okay. Alright, do we care about Cadigan Bates anymore? How much more time are we going to spend looking for him before we come back down here? That's really what we need to do. Alright, let's... Let's turn around. And we'll head back this way. If we run into him... Then we'll treat him, but... I think I've got enough treatment going for other citizens that I can avoid. Oh, who's that? Is that him? There he is. Okay, we got lucky. Well, you got lucky, Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Evening, Mr. Doctor Bates. Since I took an oath to help people, can I be of assistance? Well, even crappy seen people better like days, you. that's for sure. But it was bound to happen with all these refugees about. Infecting you is probably the last thing on these people's minds. Take this in any case. What? You give me this for free? Don't have a clue about this place, do you? Okay. So now the only person Goodbye, in Whitechapel who is still ill is Mr. Palmer. And he's got a condition I can't treat, so... We are going to head, we're going to beeline now for the Ascalon Club and meet. Yep, there he is. Neuralgia. Nothing I can do about it. So we'll meet Mr. What's his name? Redgrave. The leader of the Ascalon Club. We'll see what new story that presents any treats for me back here nope the west end uh oh never have I felt so sad to be back home <laughs> okay let's see we need to go around to the left I guess but that also means we're going to have to fight this guy. He is alone, except there's a brawler there. So if I start... Let's 
It's not a session of vampire without a shotgun blast to the face. Why can't I not move? I feel like my stamina is dropping faster. What am I doing that's making that happen? Ooh, ooh. Is it is it just that I'm zipping around with my dodges so much that it Maybe. I feel like that fight should not have been such a challenge. But it was. So what was I doing to make it so difficult? Oh, we've got another- Oh, hideout. Oh, it's in there. Rats. Well, okay, we need to- Is this a- Do we need to be worried about this person? No, they are a citizen. And the so Ascalon Club. The heart of British vampire society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. Wow, that's pretty clean and nice here. Wow. Huh. Impressed. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. Smart Alec. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. All right, Wait, all right. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how what? to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. Okay, wow, that's a lot to talk what about What do you here. think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? I don't know. I... Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Doctor Reed? This is your mother we're speaking about. Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true. May I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. <laughs> I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself Still or we are today. all done for. What are you doing out here? You mean what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. Mm -hmm. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. 
She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning. I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. I might still have to, young Tell lady. me about your adoption. What do you move. want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? <laughs> I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, Wait. you see? And one day, I'll have my death to face. She must be renting then, because if she owns a house, then she would be a property owner and therefore able to vote. Well, maybe she's still campaigning for other people to vote, even if they're not. Okay, eh, never mind, never mind. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me, and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Econ, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously, and the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Wow. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Nothing's Why should confidential it? Here. My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? <laughs> of course not. You have nothing to fear from me. Or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Wow, that was a that was a lot. And we still got more. Oh my goodness. Do you know why Lady Ashbury chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Okay, all other hints are locked. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. And we just picked up a new little side quest from her. So let's track that and see where it might be. And just right over here. So I could go directly in or run over here. We still have to deal with Sean as well. Can't let that go unresolved since it was a situation of our own making. We need to handle it. All right, here's the Ascalon Club building. Let's just... I started this saying I'm just going to go talk to the guy, so let's do it. Before we continue anything else, because he will probably give us the next major story quest. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? 
I've been I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I don't like this guy's attitude already. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. Had a little issue with a Prewin invasion, did we? My. Can I chat with that guy? Arthur Pimbleton. Yeah. There has been quite a battle here. All right, let's just let's yammer with this to the Ascalon. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Okay, so we can't actually speak with him. He is a named character, though. Upstairs, he said. Oh. All these nice little portraits. Ooh, I like that one. A little nature scene. stops talking and turns and stares at you. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansha was no match for him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know about that? Come forward, young Ekon. For we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I've been eager to make your acquaintance. I've heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. <laughs> Is she a good friend of yours? Uh, oh, I wouldn't say this just yet. Although, if we're kind of creating our own headcanon narrative, then maybe, but... Um... Yes, she is. I may even say I admire her probity and her kindness. She has helped me since I was reborn. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. <laughs> Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too wow. fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Ooh. Of course not, and yeah. I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this skull plague that threatens London and the country. Uh oh. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why have you asked me here? Because the crisis is escalating. Our enemies, the Guard of Prewen, have even launched an open hunt. The only way to calm things down is to put an end to the epidemic. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? 
Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. And 10% off at Denny's. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members, and I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. <laughs> Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. Yeah, well, I feel like that's how he's going to treat us, too. Okay, well, Lady Rick Ashbury told us to come over here and join the club and do whatever... He wants, I agree so. to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My oh. initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, Please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Okay, it's creepy. Well, speak, Dr. Reed. In front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, <laughs> but England's <laughs> traditions are the backbone of our nation. Do it, do it, do it. Stab. Uh -huh. Ah. Mmm, delightful. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! That old man can't be bothered. Whoa, 
Okay, so now we've got 5,000 XP. I we controlling last night in the I, West End, and so I at least two foreign echoes. I have to meet is an and talk to all we of these people. These down. But I, was chased by it. I, I guess... Oh, look at it. Lord Hammersley, Sheffield, Unknown, Lord Finney. I wonder... So are these guys maybe... They don't... Oh, yeah, you don't actually speak to them, but this guy... This guy we can. All right, let's see what he has to say. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Uh, not comfortable. Not comfortable with it. Not at all. Uh, don't like it or feel uneasy? Yeah, let's go uneasy. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, <laughs> you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Do we know that name? Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member, and a dying one at that. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. <laughs> Protection? Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must not the admit, hair club for men, though. this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Okay. Mr. Dawson. Of Dawson and Dawson. Oh! The wealthiest man in England. I didn't put that together. It is a pleasure to wow. meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine. I still admire your enemy. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. I don't think admiring is the same as liking, so... What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. Oh, jeez. A formidable, unscalable wall. We've been through isolate this. Isolate the deserving from the infected masses. 
Ah. Uh, but that would segregate the rich from the poor, would it not? It would be unjust. Our only course of action must be to save England. And to save England, we have to make sacrifices. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. Okay, I kind of thought he was going to give me a little side quest there, but he did not. Alright, what else do we have? Is there any, anybody else? I know, let's see, I've got to talk to, I just talked to Lord Redgrave. Alright, what? That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale. Especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparer. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic. And your findings were quite alarming. He doesn't want me to do something to Swansea, does he? Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally, but I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good <laughs> friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? You are spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, I know... This must be like, who was he, like... That's a deeper question. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Banshaw was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Vulcod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him. Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. Uh-oh. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skulls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Okay. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. Oh! What is happening? Whoa. Okay, Lord Redgrave wants me to use all my medical knowledge to pinpoint and stop all possible sources of infection in the West End. Just the West End? Not not concerned about anybody else? He seems very worried that the epidemic might spread wealth 
spread wealthier boroughs of London, and thus raising the chance of infecting Britain's elite. Of course he's only concerned about the elite. I will attempt to root out the cause of the infection. I believe I should start by interrogating all the local inhabitants I find to gather all possible information about any unusual activities related to the epidemic in the vicinity. Welp. Okay. Ask locals about possible... Okay. Are these people talk, talk to -able now? No, they're not. Okay, well, then we will exit the building and see who we can talk to elsewhere. But uh, I think for now, we'll put a pin in it. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Vampire. Uh, Happy New Year. I uh, hope your post-holiday recovery is going well. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.